federal and state women's safety ministers are meeting today to discuss how to tackle domestic violence after the murders of Queensland mother Hannah Clark and her three children. Victoria and New South Wales will push for more funds for men's behaviour change programs and frontline services. Joining me now to discuss is New South Wales Attorney General and Minister for the Prevention of Domestic Violence, Mark Speakman. Uh, Minister, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining good us morning, today. Peter. So uh, we just r ran through some of the, um, the financial arrangements that are in place. I mean, the, the federal government is chipping in some $350 million um, over the next few years. The Victorian government chipping in in excess of $500 million over the next three or four years. So what is the New South Wales government doing? Well, we're spending $431 million over four years in specialist domestic violence and family violence programs. That's on top of the hundreds of millions of dollars we spend tackling domestic violence through mainstream health, housing and education services. Uh, domestic violence is a scourge right across New South Wales. It doesn't matter where you live, uh, what your ethnicity is, you know, your social background. Um, it's right across New South Wales, it's right across Australia and indeed the Western world and that's why as a government we had to fight this on many fronts. We have to change attitudes, we have to intervene early, we have to make sure that victim survivors have somewhere safe to go and have appropriate counselling and casework support and can navigate appropriately through the courts. I mean, that is an extraordinary amount of money, isn't it, uh, both at federal level and state level, but at the end of the day, are you ever really going to stop it? Well, look, this will take generational change. This problem uh, hasn't emerged overnight, uh, but it's a very serious problem. We know that one in six women in Australia have been the victims of domestic or family violence at the hands of a mm. current or former partner. Uh, it's a very extensive mm. problem. Uh, it's not going to change mm. overnight. But uh, the key to it, I think, is changing people's attitudes, zero tolerance, and calling out bad behaviour when we see it. Uh, the, I guess that one of the, the problem is that the numbers are actually increasing um, in, in, in greater parts of the country as well. So does that mean that whatever is in place at the moment just simply isn't working? And, and what do you do to counteract that? Well, look, uh, we've seen in New South Wales in the last couple of days uh, a reported 5% increase in domestic violence incidents over the last two years. But we don't know whether that reflects uh, an increase in the underlying rate of domestic and family violence or whether it represents survivors now being more willing to come forward, where in the past there was a great stigma attached to reporting domestic and family violence, or whether it represents improved and more aggressive policing, or it's a combination of all of them. Uh, probably the best indicator of the underlying rate is domestic violence causing grievous bodily harm, because it's very hard to disguise that. Uh, and those rates are stable or falling in New South Wales. Uh, Minister, I just want to get uh, your thoughts on Bettina Arndt. Uh, you've written a very, very strong letter to David Hurley. What was behind that? Well, look, I've thought uh, very carefully about uh, Ms Arndt's uh, award of, in the Australia Day Honours. Uh, and what I've tried to do is write to the Governor-General and draw His Excellency's attention systematically to many of Ms Arndt's statements. Uh, I don't think those statements are consistent with her receiving this award. Uh, it's not about a culture war, it's about public safety and zero tolerance for statements that can risk the lives and safety of women and children. And what Ms Arndt has done on a number of occasions is made statements that trivialise sexual assault, that trivialise domestic and family violence, dismiss um, efforts to fight domestic and family violence as some kind of feminist cash cow, mm. when we know that one in six women uh, have been the victims of domestic and family violence uh, at the hands of a current and former partner. That's so what anonymous surveys by the Australian Bureau of Statistics have disclosed. So, so is, is your the objection... The problem is... Is your objection about uh, uh, her stance on, on the Hannah Clark story or is it about her track record? It's about the track record. Now, uh, I haven't attempted to analyse each and every statement she's made, but I've identified uh, to the Governor-General a number of statements that I think cross the line. It's all very well to advocate on behalf of men's health, men's mental health, uh, to advocate for uh, protection of male victims of domestic and family violence, and we know there are male victims, uh, but it crosses the line when you dismiss um, efforts to fight domestic and family violence as some kind of feminist cash cow. It, it trivialises this scourge, uh, and it's, it's an affront to mm. survivors, and it's a threat it's a threat to, sa to the, their safety. The, the, we have to call this sort of behaviour out. I uh, know, I agree with you there, but the actual handing out of the awards is done by the Council for the Order of Australia, so shouldn't that be done separately? Shouldn't be politics uh, be separate from that? 
Well, look, it should, uh, and, and it is. There's a council that uh, makes recommendations to His Excellency on these awards, and I've asked His Excellency to uh, consider uh, a number of statements that uh, Ms Art has made. I've drawn those particular statements to his attention, and I understand yeah. he'll get the advice of the council. OK, Mark Spigman, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but uh, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter.